All on the dash cam, just staring. Imagine I was, I was like, pranking. I was like, hell? imagine I was like, yo, I moved. I thought you were pranking me. I know <laughs> what was going on. No, it's not a prank, man. Alright. Uh, this episode mm. is sponsored by <laughs> Raw Gear. I buy this stuff too. Don't think this is given to me. I buy this, so I support. You came by the gym and bought it for me. Yeah, I bought it. You can ask Brad. Cash money. But the next drop, I gotta next get for free. You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> I bought this one. So the next drop. Ooh. Yeah, you already know. Damn. This is a big boy thing. Official now. This is a big boy thing. Welcome. Oh, this is so cute. It says, Welcome, pussy. Yeah, yeah, so professional. Professional. <laughs> That actually makes yeah. the guests feel good. That makes me feel very welcome. Really? Yeah, I know you didn't do it, but it makes me feel yeah. very I welcome. I did not do that shit. I feel very... Yeah, now I'm actually happy to be here. You know that's not my personality. Oh. Oh, wow. Are we live? No. All right, cool. We. I mean, it is live. That's not live, yeah. No, it is live. That. That's live, and then it's going to go right into the podcast. Oh, for real? Yeah. You it's did already, that? Yeah, and it's already recording. But that's your mic. You got to talk to your mic. Oh, that's so sick. Maybe I should have watched the episode of your podcast before to know you did that because I did not know you did that. <laughs> yeah. But I'm yeah. your biggest fan. I mean, I've been subscribed since like 2000, this podcast, 16. Like, yeah, I've this been This podcast is, is brand new. Well, it's not brand new. It's it's an old podcast. It's you know now though, it's new. You had it. You 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 revamped an old channel, and I had yeah. known you were gonna turn it into a podcast. So I subscribed to the old channel in 2016. Yeah, cool, I just yeah. knew it was a culture cast. Yeah. Um. So, anyways, we got. I was uh, lying, but I guess I was no, right. No, <laughs> yes, lying. you were like a year off, but it's all okay. good. You were close. 2017. Okay. My jokes didn't work, but okay. Yeah. Um. But anyways, we have uh, Fusi Tube Yusef. Well, you got like a few other names. Man, my name is Yusuf. Yusuf. Yes. You are, just so everyone watching knows this, Yusuf is the very first person that mm. actually got me into YouTube. And I, I've, told, I've told this story a few different times. I think just, I don't know if it, your content or my content along, along the It's years, been but, told. I've heard it many times. Yeah. But you were the guy, and just to give you guys some perspective, I had like about 600,000 followers on Instagram, and I met you at a celebrity football game. I remember you were out of shape. And I was like, yo, I really want to do YouTube. And you were like, get me in shape. I'll, I'll like help you get started. Uh -huh. And from what I remember, you put me in like two of your, and this is at the time, this is, what year was this? It must have been when I was years banging. Ago. This is when I was booming. You were the king of YouTube. Yeah. Like, I don't think there was a bigger YouTuber at the time. You were the guy. There was. It was me, Roman Atwood, and Vitaly. Okay. We were the three. Those three. Yeah. Okay. So I met, I met Yusef and I was like, all right, I want to do this YouTube shit. And we kind of did like a little transformation. He's like, yo, I want to get back in shape. I think you put me, you shouted me on like two videos, like barely in two videos. I got like 25,000 subscribers, like before I had a single video on the channel. Damn. You remember that shit? I do remember. I do remember. Yeah. And then something I've never said, but something I want to say. So me and you actually were going to work together. We were going to do business. Like I was going to help yeah. you with your channel long term. And very early on, before I had even tried it with friends, I just, I valued our friendship more than what business would have done to it. And I remember, I don't know if you remember, I told you, I don't want to do it. Yeah. And I said, I'm, I'm out. Like, I'm out. Just yeah. take it, run it, do it. You, you do it. Cause, and even like, I, I did a channel with two of my friends, Salmon and Samir recently this year. Yeah. And then I remembered, I don't like to do business with friends. Not that anything happened. We were great, but I value their friendship more. And I know how easily you can lose that friendship. So I was just like, y'all do it. I'm out. Yeah. So did you, did you, have you lost friendships like with business? Oh yeah. Time? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And that's, you, that, and that's the thing when, when, when I see a relationship change, not saying it changed in either of the two that we had, but when in the past, when I've seen it change because of that person's perception or idea of money, I like to pull out right away because the intentions aren't right. Yeah. And I, I've never, you know, I'm, I'm not the best businessman. I've made horrible business decisions, just whole, horrible financial decisions. So, yeah, I, I, I put friendship over business any day. Yeah, man, you, you've had one of the most, I'd say, up and down careers I've ever seen on YouTube. And I love that. I love <laughs> like, that. Like, you know why? Because so many people, you know, of course, like, I don't even, well, I'm sure we'll get into this. I don't go on social media no more. What do you, wait, what do you do? What do you mean? Oh, you didn't know that? No, I didn't know that. Oh, ever That's since I went, to me. Ever since I went into rehab, I, mean, I don't. We're gonna talk about this rehab shit. Yeah, yeah. But, but okay, like, well, I don't go on social media. So, so you, how do you post? You don't post anything. Um, I have team members who post for me, and if I have stories, I'll download, I'll post the stories, and I'll delete uh, off my phone immediately. What the fuck? That's just the new way of doing it. And it's brought me so much peace and sanity. I'm sure we'll get into that, but 
you know, so whenever anybody says like the famous infamous words, which they say to everybody and their mothers, you fell off. Right. One, it's funny because I'm not trying to be on. And two, while not trying to be on, after 12 years, I'm still here being talked about, whether it's in a good or bad way. Recently yeah. bad because this gentleman, I don't know if you know him, this very popular YouTuber. Um, his name is uh, Bryce Hall. He's not. He's more. I mean, I guess he's a YouTuber now. He started as a TikToker. <laughs> oh, you know him? I know Bryce Hall. Yeah. Oh, you know Bryce Hall. I know okay. Bryce Hall well. Yeah. Um. He punched me and knocked me out on a yeah. reality show. So. <laughs> so I was talked about for that. But you see what I mean? Like I don't even want to be. Like people always say, like you but attention hold on, hold on. cloud. Why did you go on a reality show if you didn't want to be <laughs> talked about? Like we gotta talk about the. We gotta talk about like actually that. Oh, right, well, let's rewind. We'll get to there. So, you, I'll so, let you lead this. So. Before we get into that shit, we got to talk about like, you remember uh, years ago you had the whole, the whole episode, the, 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 oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. The concert thing, yeah. all that stuff, the yes, Drake sir. stuff, of all course. this crazy shit. Of course. Wrote about and, it in a book. And you've gone ups and downs even prior to that. Yes, sir. And I talked to you earlier today. What do you think makes at this point in your life different? Because you've always come back. You gone up. You all got, right. People got it. And I'm going to tell you like this. People are like. Fuck this guy. I'm tired of his oh, shit. Oh, my God. Of course. <laughs> and know? by all means, I don't ask for support anymore. I'm not even a like I'm not a I'm I'm not even a public figure anymore or a person who's trying to be anything right now. Yeah. So there's there's no support being asked If people choose to support me. That's on their own free will. There's yeah. no gain for me on anything. I have different businesses going on right now. Um, but what I was saying to you earlier was when I was in rehab and I'm sure we'll get to that. I was talking to my brother on the phone, talking to him about how this time was different and I had an epiphany and I was awake and my eyes were open and I could see things. And based on what I was telling him, my brother's response was, what the hell? We've been trying to tell you this for years yeah. since the incident in 2018. Here's the thing though. You can never change somebody. You can never get somebody to change. They have to change at their own time. Yeah. Of when it's ready for them to, when they're ready in life to change, whenever God's timing it is for them to change, they will change. Yeah. So when I was 28, you would think a public manic episode where I lost millions of dollars, my ego, my self pride, my self love, my self respect, all my friends, everything attached to my, who I was as a person. You would think that's enough to wake me up. It wasn't. All it did was make me want to get back to that level of fame and money I was once at. So I convinced the world that I was trying to get better, but I was really just trying to get back to that level of fame and money. Yeah. And this year, I got there. With the social gloves boxing, hosting yeah. that event, with everything that happened on the YouTube, to my friends telling me we can't open up TikTok without seeing you. I had got there. But what happened by getting there? Hold on. Did you call in that bomb threat? You stupid. Yeah, fuck you. You are stupid. Yeah, fuck you. you. I, <laughs> I had to fuck with you. My bad. I wrote about it in my book. I didn't even give you a copy. I didn't um, give nobody a copy because I didn't like it. Um, So all that did though, me getting back to that level of money and fame, it made me as a person and my issues even worse than before. So yeah. like when I checked into rehab, my sister was the only one that knew out my, my my immediate family. Hold on, hold on. We got We can't get to rehab. Yet. Okay, okay, okay. We gotta, I, I got a story. To, okay. We gotta we gotta figure out how you got there first. Yeah, yeah. So 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 twenty eight. I wasn't ready. Life. I wasn't ready to change. I wasn't right. ready to give up that lifestyle. I wasn't ready to grow up. For now, though, at thirty one, for the incident that happened, for whatever reason, it was enough. And the reason I knew that. Because I know we're going to get there. When I was in rehab, when I was staring at the psychiatrist's eyes, the therapist's eyes, I looked at them and I would say, the way, same way I'm looking at you, the reason I know that it's true this time is because I'm not lying to myself. Yes, but, but the question is, how do you know that truly? Right? Because you've, you've gotten through so many things and I know you've, you've been on medications. I know you've done all that stuff for your mental health. Well, we're going to have to talk about rehab for me to explain the, the rationale as to why I believe that. For sure. So let's talk about how you got into rehab then. Oh, for sure. Because you were a fucking, apparently some raging alcoholic. I didn't know that. Bruh. I didn't know that. Bruh. I remember you were, you were here once because we had like a little get together and you were like wasted. And Nadim was like trying to like calm you yeah, down. And you know, I texted, texted Nadim that next day and was like, bro, how drunk was I? I'm so sorry. Bad. Like so bad. That was every single time I've been yeah. drunk. Yeah. Every. T so. So look, there are different levels of alcoholics, right? 
Some alcoholics wake up in the morning and crave a bottle, crave a, a sip. They need it. Some people need a trigger. They're mad, they reach for the bottle. They're happy, they reach for the bottle. They're nervous, they reach for the bottle. My alcoholism came from, because I'm an addict by nature. I can uh, get addicted to anything and everything. And my primary addiction was sex. Yeah. Across the board, sex through and through, right? But that's just one of my addictions because I can get addicted. Like when you say sex, you mean like, like pornography or sex with people? Like what? All of it. All of it. All of it. Massage yeah. parlors, pornography. So rub and tugs. Oh, yeah. Those are lit, though. And I, I want to. That's, Those it's, are so I do want to talk to you about it, though, because this is something that drove me insane. Okay. So me as an addict who's lived in shame and guilt and hated himself and felt like I was the worst person on earth opens up his YouTube, <laughs> sees a Steve will do it video, took this homeless man to a massage parlor to get. And you guys are all celebrating yeah. outside the massage parlor, outside of the <laughs> thing that makes me feel so guilty and hate what? myself. And that's so weird. Yeah. So my question for so many years was what makes the difference between my friends who could do it normally, and me as an addict. You, you related some sort of shame to it. A lot. That's why. Yeah, and there's also, um, yeah, it's, it's a, I learned the answer in rehab. It's yeah. a very deep and complex answer. But yeah, rub and tugs. Yeah. Um, that was a big one. That's Amazing. where it started. That's Amazing. where it started. It started Amazing. from my problem with premature ejaculation. So, <laughs> yeah, wait. How many times did you go to a rub and tug? Like uh, on a weekly, on a week or a month? It could vary because I'm like one of those, I could either be... Set, I, I could be seven times a week. Oh my! Or I could God. be one time a week. Okay, like it's it varies. Yeah, I haven't been in a while. I'm not gonna lie to you. But when I at my peak, it was like two times a week, maybe three times a week. But to you, it's like chill. Like you could just no. Do it. it was I just it was like a great massage, and then like I'm just, <laughs> you know that's it. Yeah. I feel like you could go into a regular massage parlor, and the masseuse would ask you, "Hey, do you want anything <laughs> extra?" <laughs> <laughs> no, but me, it was like, it was like a need. Yeah. Like there's a difference between a want and a need where it's yeah. like 8 p.m. I'm living in 1600 Vine in the most expensive penthouse apartment. Logan Paul's living down the hall. George Janko is in my apartment, my condo, asking me, do you want to go out with me and Logan? This is before Logan exploded. Yeah. Me saying, nah, man, I got things to do. This is funny because this reminds me of the conversation I had with, with Logan about this actual, not with you specifically, but that same time period. Yeah. He leaves. They leave to whatever party they were going to go to, which would have been great for my career. I said I had something to do. It was a rub I and sneak tug. into the par uh, parking lot and I drive to a rub and tub. What the it was that much of a necessity. What, what do you think caused that trigger? Like, what do you think made you want that so much in your life? So, by the way, I've never been as vulnerable and open on a podcast and I'm about to because I wrote about it in a book, even though it would, nobody heard about it. it just, I, I just did it to get over my demons. But when I was really young, really, really, really young, yeah. um, and everybody in elementary school and junior high was talking about uh, sex and porn, me coming from a Middle Eastern background didn't even know what those words meant. So... I you went because you were so sheltered. Yeah. Or what? Yeah. Okay. So I went home one day. We're talking about junior high, elementary school kids talking about they having sex, yeah. whether they were capping or not and hearing it from right. their big brothers. They were talking about it. I go home one day. I get butt booty naked. Um, I had a life size toy leopard in my room. What? Uh, I turn on Miss Congeniality on TV and I started okay. humping it for the first time okay. in my life. Okay. For the first time in my entire life as a child. So, as, I, as I come, for the first time in my life, my mom opens the door. Holy shit. How old were you? Very young. Find out when Miss Congeniality first hit TV. That's how old I was. I don't know. Okay. My mom makes eye contact with me. My Muslim You're mother in a headscarf, butt naked. With a, with a, pup, with a toy. Coming. With a, with a, with a blow-up, not a blow-up toy, like a... Uh, you know those carnival life-size toys? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My mom yells at me instantly and goes, Yusuf, put on your clothes. She shuts the door. Didn't know what to do, so that night I sent her an AOL email. <laughs> Yo, we taking this shit way back, dog. Yo, no, I got yeah. It. I feel in, it. In a I middle, get it. like one, we didn't have that vulnerability. To By the way, in. guys, AOL email was that was. Uh, oh, they don't know. I mean, they probably know. Wow. Some of them know, but like okay. that shit's old school. That's yeah. archaic yeah. right now, bro. You literally got an you got an email account. It's basically an email account. Yeah. But AOL is like dial gone, up mode on fifty six k. Like back in the day when yeah. you, before you plugged in, it was yeah. just like a if someone was on the phone, you weren't sending emails. Yeah, exactly. You know, in your house. So I sent my mom an email. 
because we're 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 sheltered, we're cultured. I can't go up to my mom and say, "Hey, mom, sorry you caught me butt booty naked," or explain to me what's happening Humping to me a as a child. Animal. You know, like yeah. explain to me what's happening. So, you, what was in the email? Do the thing on TV where the parents sit down their kids and tell them the bee, birds and the bees story. Right. They don't do that in Middle Eastern cultures. Always, like still. Yeah, it's hmm. a very taboo topic, which caused me to write my mom an email saying mama i don't know what happened to me i'm sorry the devil got in my head it won't happen again my mom reads that email at work the next day replies to my email while at work and says yusuf you are right the devil did get into your head this is why you need to pray don't ever let it happen again so now my she mom never spoke to you in person about this my mom comes home from work that day never mentions a word to it as if it never happened have you guys spoke about it since? No. And I, I told her, do not read my book. So she doesn't even know how much this has impacted my life. Holy shit. So that moment right there associated, that moment of coming and that feeling and girls and everything and to, be, to be the worst the possible thing I can do on earth. Yeah. So the first time I had sex, high school, senior, I'm in the back of my Honda Accord, Coyote Hills. Me and this girl have been dating. We're madly in love. We've been talking about this moment for a long time, as kids do. We're about to take each other's virginity. She puts the condom on me. The second, <laughs> the second I make contact. No way. Not even push inside. Contact. And some fire pussy. I stare. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you got me dying. Sorry. I stare yeah. at her shaking. And she looks at me. She goes, what's wrong? I go, I finished. Yo. And from that moment on, I swear to God, Brad, every single time I tried to have sex for probably the next five, ten years, I had a problem with premature ejaculation. Watch because this pregame. I, that didn't work. Ask me. You're about to ask me what every doctor has asked me. Have you tried this? Have you? I've tried everything. My brain wires got associated with that moment being just a, a thing. I didn't even have to be horny. I could be flaccid and come. What the fuck? So I had a very high sex and uh, like hormonal, like sex drive, whatever. I even just got my blood work checked and I actually have a high testosterone level. I'm eight something. Even with all this running? Yeah, I'm eight something right now. Holy shit, which we'll talk about the running yeah. in a sec. But so, so I have 800 plus. Yeah. Oh, wow. So the doctor was like, I can't even help you because he was like, let, let me check, you know, to see if it, he was like, you're good. After that call I had today with him. Yeah. So as a, as a kid who had that. So what, what ended up happening was I told myself, all right, I can't have sex with any girl. It's going to ruin every relationship I have because any relationship I get into. This when you were a kid, you lost your virginity. College. Oh, this isn't. Even in college. When did you tell yourself this though? Oh, high school. High school. When you lost your virginity. Yeah. Okay. It, it, when it became a recurring problem, I re one of my friends one day comes to me and goes, you won't ever believe what just happened. What happened? I was at a massage parlor, and at the end, she asked me if she wanted to give me a hand If I wanted a hand job, me acting like, oh, no way, was so excited because I was like, this is perfect. I get to practice lasting longer. I don't know the person. The person doesn't know me. And I can get better for the real world. Problem is, I go to that massage parlor he told me about. I pay the cover charge. I go inside. I lay down. My eyes are closed. End of the massage comes. I'm rock hard with the towel on top of me. And I feel this. In my head, I'm like, she did not just do that. My eyes are still closed. I feel this. I go, she did not just do that. I open my what? eyes. Wait, wait, wait. How she old She slaps you? my dick. Yeah, I get it. But what? <laughs> Yo, wait a minute. And you're senior wait, wait, going wait. into college. Okay. What? <laughs> so I'd never heard of this. Like, why did she do that? Look, why? So okay. I, I open my eyes. She's standing beside me. And she goes. You're pitching a tent. You're pitching a tent. Oh, yeah. Okay. With a towel. Yeah, yeah. I'm a it. new customer. So she doesn't know if I'm popo, what I am. Okay, okay. She has to assess the situation. Right. So if I slaps. had opened it and I was mad, she could have been like, accident, accident, sorry. Yeah, yeah. But I looked at her with a smile. So she goes, I go. Yeah, okay. Here's the problem. She puts the oil on. Uh-huh. Came. Shut the fuck up, bro. Came. Shut the fuck and up, guess what, dog. I don't believe this. And guess what the massage parlor did? 
What'd they do? She looked at me and laughed. No. <laughs> so now my $40. I mean, that shit's funny, though. So now my 40 Yeah, but imagine what it does to a kid. Yeah, but... Bro, how the fuck did you come that fast? Bro. I'm impressed. <laughs> like, I'll be honest with you. I'm impressed. I hate people like you because I'll be honest. You're the kind of people I can hear. And this is no dig to you. This is like good job. But you're the kind of friend who would tell stories and be like, man, I was fucking this girl for two hours and I couldn't come. <laughs> and in my head, I'm like, oh, yeah, I know all about that. Meanwhile, no, I'm I mean, like, shit. I just don't get it. I don't understand. Yeah, it, it, it's just it's a it's a it's. It's a literal issue. It's a it's a wiring issue that happened from my mom catching me that first time. Yeah. It's just I associated so much to that moment where it just I got wired to that. Is it do you think it was like the need to just be done with it? I don't know. I I I, I don't know. I don't know. There's no way it's still like that. There's no way you're fuck you're like gonna fuck a girl and you're like gone. Oh, you'd be like surprised. Today. Oh, there are times. Really? Because oh, yeah. I, I mean, there are times where it's like it's faster than normal for me. No, for no, sure. no, no. I'm talking about very, but fast. not instant. No, no, no. There are times where I have to come before even starting the sex, and I have to tell her. I and I, I, I usually have the same. It's been a very long time, so you're probably gonna make me come fast. But I can't wait till I can meet the girl and tell her like, or like she reads my book, and I can be Why like, Why don't you just have this? Be like, Hey, look, let me explain something to you. You, you just a meet a girl you're about to have sex and you have to sit her down and say, hey, by the way, I can't control my orgasm. I mean, she might appreciate the honesty instead of just like coming instantly. Some girls have appreciated the instant because they feel like, oh, wow. So, like, wow. so then you go for round two. Um, round two is not the same thing. There's no way it's instant no, every time. Round two is fine. Oh, you're good then. Who cares? But round one is always. Wow. Damn. Fuck. Except. Except. When, Even with a condom on? Yes. Holy Except shit. Except either, and now I don't do it anymore, when I was blacked out drunk, which is why alcohol played such a big role uh, in my life. Okay, so now we can Not talk also about blacked it. out, also just drunk. And, and when um, I actually form a relationship with that girl and get used to her. Be comfortable with her. Comfortable. Yeah. So if she's like my girlfriend, I'm, what's that porn star's name, that bald guy? I'm Johnny Sinzing this bitch. Like I'm nice. lasting. Nice. I love it. But if I just met her, you're instant. I'm instant. So it, it seems it has to do something with like, like the shame of it. Like the yeah, there's a lot, man. I'm still trying to learn about it. Even through rehab, still trying to learn about it. I actually had a sex addiction therapist at five o'clock today that I missed. I was supposed to take it on Zoom. I just realized I missed. Yeah, it. that's a that's a that's a fucking intense. So that makes sense why you got into the alcohol because it was able to like numb you a little bit. So it probably didn't. One of the reasons. Like One of the reasons. Oh, what I was saying about the alcohol. I think you you. I didn't even finish saying it. So I said some people are alcoholics by nature. They have to grab it. My alcoholism came from, you know how some people are like, oh, let's just have a drink. Let's just take a shot. Yeah. Not in my vocabulary. To me, I associated with drinking everything in my life, actually. Think about my weight loss. I'm either super, Extreme. super, super fat and obese. And I'm not using those words lightly, like actually out of shape or I'm the most shredded, you know, gym rat juice head in the fucking world who just looks crazy yeah there's I've no seen all these there's no middle ground yeah, notice so with you. alcohol it's either i'm gonna abstain i used to do it the unhealthy way though abstain and not do it or there's no one sip if i'm drinking i'm getting fucked up and blacking so, out so when did the drinking start for you like more recently oh um the it, it's it, there's always been glimpses of it in my life yeah like the Okay, look at what just happened this year. I got knocked out. It made me realize I need rehab. Yeah. Let me take you back to college in 2009. No, 2021. Right before I started FusiTube. I'm at a fraternity college party. My girlfriend at that party tells me I want to have sex tonight because I had kept putting it off. Why did I keep putting it off? Because I knew I was going to come immediately and there's nothing I can do about it. So what did I do that night? I drank my ass off. What happened because I drank my ass off? I blacked out. What happened when I blacked out? I blocked the doors of my fraternity. And when any girl wanted to leave, I said, if you want to leave, you have to limbo under my arms. So girls would limboing under my arms. Next thing I know, two SJSU football players come and stand in front of me. And I go, you want to leave? You limbo under my arms. They go, oh, yeah? We'll give you three seconds and see how you feel about that. Three Two on two, they check me, I go in the air, my head hits the concrete, I black out. I wake up in my friend's bed with a hospital bracelet around my wrist, and I wake up and I go, Matt, Matt, what happened? 
He wakes up. He goes, I'm in his bed. I don't even know how I got there. He goes, oh, you got knocked out by two football players. We have to take you to the hospital. You're okay. You don't have any head injuries. Go back to sleep. I packed all my shit. I moved back to my parents' house, lost all the weight for the first time, and started a channel called FoosyTube. I don't get... My, I I've don't, lived so many lives, Brad. I have I so many stories that people I, don't know Brad, about. So it's for, like... I've been there for a lot of this. That's it's like, so it's never ending. It's like, how do you have that many stories? Like, how, how, how does that keep happening? How have you not learned? But I can... Uh, I'm going to say something at the end of this podcast um that relates to all that but yeah man it, so it's been happening so, so alcohol has always been there but this year you said when did that happen recently yeah let's let's talk about the whole the whole going into rehab thing okay i want to so, so this year i was doing great right yeah or so it looked like like when my sister called my oldest brother and said hey yusuf's in rehab his response was what the fuck he was doing so good this year yeah. i made the world think i was doing good the problem was i was drinking more than ever i was smoking more than ever and I was taking more Adderall than ever. People didn't even know I was taking Adderall this year. And I was abusing Adderall again. Well, I don't, I don't understand why you keep going back to it. I mean, I get it. I mean, but, I, 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 bro, it's, it's like I'm an addict by nature. Yeah, but if you know that and you could say that and you're like, I know I'm an addict. I know I'm an addict. How come you? An alcoholic can stop? know he's an alcoholic, but it doesn't mean he's going to stop. Of course. There has to be something more, which is what you learn in rehab with depending on what program you go into, a 12-step program, a, so, a, a religious program, whatever you go so, into. So Bryce punches you in the face during some altercation. Well, let me explain how I got to that. Yeah. like I, So, yeah. <laughs> You're so confused this podcast. I'm just talking. No, no. It's you want to ask? Yeah. No, so, no, no. Go ahead. I mean, it's it's like you you find yourself on this reality thing. The JC and what is it? Yeah. And who who's on this show? JC and Kian run it. And who's who was on at that show that you were on? So what happened was I'm just gonna I have to tell the story. I'm Go sorry. ahead, yeah, no worries. The year before I was on this same reality show for season two, they knew Fousey's gonna be on. And Fousey, the persona, what is he known for? Drama, high problems, energy, problems. problems. Yeah, yeah. What is that gonna bring? Views and ratings. Right. Problem is, I show up to this show, they made us do a challenge upon arrival before even going into the mansion. Who lost the challenge? Me. Who got sent home? Me. So they said, we're going to bring you back for season three. So a year goes by. Season three is now here. They're like, Yusuf, do you want to come back? It's a now on a $100,000 cash prize. I'm like, fuck yeah. You know, the Fousey persona, that guy who loves attention, ego, all that shit was like, hell yeah, thriving. Yusuf knows better. Fousey, and I made that distinction in rehab, and I'll talk about that. So I got excited. I said, yes, I'll come. Here's the problem. On reality shows, you're supposed to, if you're a contestant, you're supposed to give in your phones. You're not allowed to have your phones on reality shows. The star, For how long? The whole time you're taping. The stars on this season were so big that they allowed them to have their phones. Okay. So the day before, I'm the surprise guest coming on day two. The day before I'm going to go, I open my Instagram and I go to Tana Mojo's Instagram and I see her wearing a reality house shirt. And then I go to Bryce's and I see Bryce there. Why did I panic when I saw Tana? Two weeks before, I got so drunk with Tana. Not two weeks before, even more than that. Where I was like, I wasn't aggressive in touching. I was aggressive in verbal and what I wanted to do to her. Wait, well, what? I was hitting on her hard, hard body. Okay, okay. Where I embarrassed the fuck out of myself. Drunk. Where I thought ever since that moment, I convinced myself that she hated me. Yeah. So I created a scenario in my head. Tana's going to air me out on this TV. She's going to be mad that I'm there. She's going to do A, B, and C. Stayed up that whole night eating, post-mating and eating. Wake up that next morning. My assistant wakes me up. First thing I do is pop an Adderall. Empty stomach. They come pick me up. We dri the drive is supposed to be two hours and 40 minutes. It ended up being four hours and 45 minutes. I get so antsy during the drive. I text my assistant and go. Where was this place at? Don't even know. Yeah, okay. I go, where did you pack the fireball? She tells me what suitcase it's in. We stop the car. I grab the gallon of Fireball and I proceed to chug. I look at the driver and I look at the other girl contestant come and I go, oh, don't worry. I'm just getting loose a little bit. I show up. They take us into this back room and do interviews like this where there's cameras with just the production crew. Yeah. They tell us what to say. What's up, bitches? We're back. I'm already lit. Everybody on everything I say is laughing. Yeah. That not only brings up my drunkenness, it gets me to keep picking up the bottle and drinking more. Now it's time to go out to meet the cast and surprise them. We walk out. 
Tana is excited to see me. Boosie! So all that pre-stress I created in my mind the day before was for nothing. Tana was happy to see me. She gives me a hug. Bryce sees me. The first thing he says, and it's on camera on the show, he knew the second I got there, he points to me and goes, this guy is wasted. I was, wa I was blacked out just showing up. I'm making a fool of myself when we started. So we get there. You know what's interesting to me? You're... you're for how long I've known you, you're, you're reactive. You're so reactive to everything. What I mean by that is like, for example, you talk about this Tana thing and her being like, oh, she's going to be mad at me. You're reactive before you even see the reality. Yeah. You do this with everything though. You've done it for years. Yeah, that's a problem. Where, where, but where do you think that's come from? Um, so what anxiety is, is anxiety is not living in the present. It's yeah. living in the future, living in the past. For sure. So in that moment of anxiety, I'm thinking of the future. Oh, shit, Tana's going to hate me because of what I did in the past. So it's that anxiety that I carry. Yeah. Which now, it's, I'm going to get to where I am now. And I know people are going to be like, yeah, we've heard this. They're yeah. not, you know, you're thinking, but whatever. The so, only time will really tell this one. Exactly. Yeah. But that's how it was for years. Everyone's like, oh, we'll see you next time. I even was like that. I was like, yo, I've known this motherfucker for years. I'm like, this guy is going to go up. He's going to go down. He's Just go believe, up. baby. So, yo, if this time, yeah. I swear to God, if like a year and a half goes by and I see the same Yusef that I see now. You're going to be I, happy. I'll be very proud. Yeah. Of no, my life's going to continue skyrocketing and doors are going to continue I'll opening very, right now. Very I'll proud tell you what I have planned and everything. We'll get to that later. So, so anyways. So the first challenge we do when we get there. And this is right after Bryce goes, oh, I know this guy's wasted. wasted. Okay. They go, Yusuf, you and your guest that just showed up are going to do a challenge against Tana and her guest, her guy. You guys are going to eat this shit. Literal shit. Like fear factor type shit. But what, what was it? Though? Like shit. It like, wasn't like human shit. No, but like it's pretty close. No, but what was it? Though? Don't know. But was it a meat? Like was it an animal? I forgot. They said it in the show, but I don't know. It was like, yeah, like sh like shit. Okay, but everyone listening is just like, he wasn't eating shit though. Think about something even worse than shit. That's what it was. But was it a from an animal? Okay, from an animal. So it's like bull testicles or something. Something. Okay. So the second I smell it, I start yakking. What does that do? Make my drunk even more. So I'm yakking, I'm yakking, I'm yakking. Why would throwing up make your drunk more? Because I was on an empty stomach and on an Adderall. The, oh, the, 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 the yeah. yakking just intensified my drunkenness. Got it. So I'm not going to eat that shit. So I look at my teammate and I say, yo, here's our game plan. You eat this and I'm just going to keep throwing up to distract them from eating. So while she's eating it and stuff, I'm just doing shit like grabbing it, throwing it over my shoulder under the table to be funny. I know I'm not going to eat that shit. So at the end, they go, all right, Fousey, your team lost. You're disqualified. Yeah. Here's the catch this season. No one goes home. Oh, shit. They go, go into the house. So we go into the house. You know when you're new in a crowd and especially when you're drunk, it's like you, you want to feel welcomed in a cohesive part of the group. Like going into a party, you want to feel welcome. It's so hard for me to relate to that because I don't really like to drink too much. Okay. And I just chill. I take like one. I can't. I, I'd love to relate to you right now, but yeah. like, I don't give a fuck about that. Yeah. And, I pull, and I'm a loner at the party. I'll stand in the back. And the I should have done that. But I had, they didn't show this too much on the show. But when I first walked in, the crowd, the crew, the cast members that were there for the last 24 hours, Bryce was already telling me who hooked up with who, who likes who, who's friends with who. And I'm brand new. And they all sit on the table and they're all talking to each other like they've known each other forever. And I'm just an outsider standing on the outside. Yeah. So what I is love a, that shit? I'm used to that shit. Exactly. I, I wish I was. But what yeah. is a person who's new to an environment, not know what to do, kind of like what a bully does? Started talking shit. Who did I start talking shit to? Bryce. What'd you say? Ah, Bryce, you're a bitch. You don't really drink. This is a drinker. We took shots of tequila. They didn't put in the show like this fucking big. Just kept taking shots, shots, shots. I'm so you gone. were challenging to drink. Yeah, I'm yeah. gone. Yeah. Next thing I challenge Bryce on, I'll beat your ass in boxing. <laughs> you lost you your You guys match. are both really unsuccessful at that. And That's our egos funny. are talking. It was two <laughs> yeah. egos going off. Bryce yeah. goes, you really think you could beat me? I go, no, I don't. I go, but give me three months to train. I think I can. Just, you know, who's, whose dick is bigger type of talk. Right, right. The producers put me and Bryce in a room, an interview room, the same one I was in when we first got there. Yeah. Don't remember this part because it's like glimpses. We cussed each other out or I cussed him out for 10 minutes. I'll beat your ass. I'll do this. I even touched his face. It's like the most cringy, awkward fucking shit ever. 
I was like, I'm going to put my penis in your throat. Like stupid shit. Like weird what? shit. Yes, what? I was blacked what? out. I was blacked what? out. Here's yeah. where shit gets interesting, right? I'm out kicking it around this mansion, lost somewhere, blacked out. Yeah. Somebody on the production crew, I don't know who, comes up to me and goes, hey, they're doing uh, cast photos in that room. Go over there. My welcome Fusi screen came It doesn't matter. <laughs> so I, I, I walk to that room. I open the door. Yeah. There's a camera recording me. And the whole cast outside of Bryce and Tan are standing right there and behind the green screen facing that way. So they don't see me opening this door. What are they doing? They're doing a testimonial on camera talking shit about me. Oh, Yusuf is so drunk. This dude's crazy. This dude's psycho. He begs for a like off the rails type shit. Damn. My reaction blacked out is <gasps> that shit's funny, though. So I walk up to them. They don't know I'm behind them. I'm standing right behind them. One girl turns around, sees me, screams because she gets scared and moves. And there was an and everybody sees me. They're terrified. Me and one of the girls start going at it verbally back and forth. Yeah. And I'm just saying like bullshit, like just talking on my ass. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Now. I take full accountability for this moment and I, and I even owned it in the moment and it's on the fucking recording of the show. I did the stupidest thing I think I've ever done in my entire life. Like hands down. I've done a lot of stupid things, but this one just takes the this one takes the cake. Yeah. Cause sober me and why I realized I was an alcohol sober me would never do something like this. Drunk Yusuf, drunk Fusi would. Yeah. I'm talking to the girl. Imagine this is her head. I go, shut the fuck up. Or you like kind of mushed her. I pushed her forehead like oh, that. Okay. I go, shut the fuck up. And then she pushes mine. Okay. Right. N World War fucking two. They cut like, one girl runs in. Hey, you said, no, you don't touch a girl. Everybody yelling, you don't touch. Girl. And I'm just like, well, and you see it in the show, my consciousness. And I really go like, you know, when you don't know what you're doing, I go, oh, what? What, what, what did I do? I, I did. Oh, and I start apologizing. Yeah. They kick me out the room. I go to the room. I go, they didn't show this, but I lay down to go to sleep. Five minutes later, I wake up and I go into the room where the rest of the cast is sleeping. I'm laying down. I lay down on a bed. Yeah. Bryce walks in. Dude, you're fucking psycho. I'm blacked out, belligerent, slurring. Why? What did I do? Da, da, da. You put your hands on a woman. You did this to a woman. Da, da, da. I start saying shit to him that doesn't even make sense. So you, you see, you know all this too about it because if you're blacked out, you can't really recognize it. But you're because you're seeing it on camera. No, I because I've told this story even while I was in rehab, so I knew what happened. It's like I had that vague recollection. The only thing that was different based on what the story I told in rehab and what actually happened was the words that came out and how they edited it. So I'm blacked out because I didn't have any – I wasn't conscious in the moment of recollecting everything. But after hearing the stories and remembering it, like you get those glimpses that pop back into your head. But yeah. watch, it, watch it. You can clearly see this dude's fucking gone. Yeah. Gone. So this dude being you me. Yeah. So I'm laying on the bed without I was talking to Bryce on next thing I know the girl whose forehead I touched. Yeah. Touched like pushed away wrong in every capacity. But I want to say the difference and I'll say why I'm saying that difference. That girl comes in. Guess whose bed I was accidentally laying on the girls hers. Oh. I don't know if they showed this on the show. But the first thing she said is get the fuck off my bed. OK. I, I stand up I go like this. I go up to her. I go yo. I'm belligerent. I'm drunk. But I end up saying, I'm fucking sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry for disrespecting you. Not that clearly and enunciated because I was drunk. But I said, I'm fucking sorry. If what I did was wrong, I'm sorry. Now, any friend, any good friend, this is no disrespect to Bryce or anybody, but anybody, like if you were there, I know you as a person. Your ass specifically would have carried me up, grabbed me like this, carried me. Put, took me in another room to protect me and my career and said, go the fuck to sleep. Yeah, you fucked up. Yeah. You fucked up. Yeah. Because I know I did. Yeah. I just finished apologizing, taking full accountability. Literally. It's on fucking camera on the show. I take accountability. I apologize to her. She even goes like this. She goes, no, you didn't just touch me. You did this. And she does it three times to get me to understand. And I let her forcefully push my head. I go, okay, okay. I got it. It's done. Bryce then takes the moment and looks at me and goes, don't you ever lay your hands on or assault a woman ever again. I go, see, I was, I was apologizing. I was good with it, but I wasn't okay with the words assault. 
yeah. assault a woman, right? So I looked at him, and they, they, this is all edited in the show and everything. I'm like, assault, uh, right? And then I end up doing another stupid thing. It's something you just don't do in bro code, but you also don't punch a guy friend in bro code. I look at Bryce. I point at him in the face drunk. Or I touched him. I don't remember. I think I touched him because in the show they were saying I touched him. And I said, you're lucky I don't tell the world what I know about you. Yeah. That triggered it. <laughs> I'm not going to say what I know. I'm not going to say what I'm holding on to. So then Bryce starts antagonizing me. What do you know? What do you know? Me, even belligerent, says, I don't know. I don't know nothing. I don't know. Bryce snaps. Pushes me. You hear me on the show say, um, don't touch me, Bryce. And I'm walking towards him. As I'm walking towards him, hands down, not confrontational, not about to swing. Dink. Yeah. Clean shot. I hit the ground. They edited this part. What they didn't show, everybody left the room, left me unconscious on the ground for a long period of time. On the show, they made it seem like the producers ran in. They didn't. They left me on the ground. All they did, they, 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 they got me up. They walked me. They put me on a couch, and I, I woke up eight hours later, my face out to here, confused, dazed, and everything. I wake up. My phone's still in my pocket. Don't remember a single fucking thing. Didn't even know I got punched the day before. Damn, too bad he couldn't get Austin with that shit. <laughs> Fuck. Thanks for bringing light to my darkest moment. I got to. There's no um, other way to do it, man. So I walk to the bathroom, and I see two of the producers. I'm like, yo, what's up, man? Where's the bathroom? Like, what happened last night? They look shook. I'm like, what happened? They're like, um, Yusuf, you were involved in a physical altercation. We have to send you home. Physical altercation? I've never gotten in a fight with my life. Like, who did I get in a physical altercation with? Um, Bryce, he knocked you out. You would think by hearing that I'm mad. Like, oh, let me go find Bryce. I was like, Bryce? I was like, I was drunk. Let me go talk to him. I promise you we'll be fine. Did Bryce get taken home too? Oh, okay. I go, I promise you we'll be fine. Let me go talk to him. They go, no, 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 trust me. Because they thought it was like real beef. Yeah. 7 a.m., door opens, Uber waiting outside. I go home. I pass out the entire Uber ride. I get home. I go and sleep into bed. I wake up at 5 p.m. I have a text from Bryce. Ha ha. Uh, no, hard, uh, no hard feelings, bro. But last night was pretty crazy. Dot, dot, dot. I call him. Yo, Bryce, what happened? Oh, you showed up. You were wasted to this reality show. You put your hands on a woman. I let him say it this time. I didn't, I didn't like try to correct anything again. You put your hands on a woman. And then he didn't say it. And then three minutes later into the conversation, he goes, you know, I knocked you out, right? I was like, I know, Bryce. I know. But I, I had already released it. I, did, I knew there was an issue bigger than that. So I hang up from Bryce. First thing I do, I call my manager. And I go, John, I fucked up. Now, you would think a manager in this situation would call, like, how am I going to get my client out of this bad predicament? Yeah. Right? Thank God. And this is why managers are so fucking important in your career. I have a manager who, A, makes enough money from other clients, yeah. but B, cares about me as a person first. He called a guy for help, but not for help to get out of the situation. He called a guy and said, hey, I've been managing Yusuf for the last year. Literally a week and a half ago, however long it was, he got blacked out at the Jake Paul fight in Cleveland. He almost got in a fight with a fan five feet away from Dave Chappelle. And we had to take that fan's camera and delete the footage. He gets in problems every time he drinks. He's also suffering from severe depression, anxiety, da 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 The guy goes, I'm willing to help Yusuf if he's willing to help himself. This is a, this is a rehab thing. No, I didn't know. I just knew it was a guy. Okay. So then John goes, are you willing to help yourself? I go, yeah. They send a therapist to my house on Sunday. She talks to me for three hours. That's Sunday after the yeah. fight. Yeah. Okay. Ha fight happened Friday, I think. Sunday, they sent a therapist to my house. Yeah. I also got checked out at the hospital. I had symptoms of a concussion, all that shit. So then I go, um, the therapist talks to me for three hours. She gets up. She goes, wow, man. I tell her my whole life story, everything, not just the incident on the reality show. She gets up. She leaves. She goes, we'll tell you what our plan is tomorrow. I wake up that next day at 2 p.m. I call John. Hey, John, I'm ready to find out what the plan is. Oh, Yusuf, we've actually been talking all, all morning. You're going to rehab in Pennsylvania. Pack your bags. Yeah. Now, nine out of 10 out of 10 times, I would have said, fuck no. Fuck no. Because why, did, why did you decide to go this time? That's the thing. I was ready to accept change because the second he said that, it wasn't even, oh, I get it. I'll go to rehab so people think I got better. 
The second he said it, tears came down my face and I knew I needed change. My, I just knew it. My soul was tired. I was tired. I was tired. After my manic episode, I wanted to go to rehab more than anything, but for financial reasons, I pussied out. This year, I didn't even ask how much it was before going, and it was a lot of fucking money, and I went. I cried. I called two of my best friends. They came over. They helped me pack. The next day, I was on a plane. I fly to rehab. I tried to leave the first day, but I stuck it out, and it was the best decision I ever made in my fucking life. What, what do you learn? Like, what is it like? So first of all, I want to say, um, I think rehab would help every single person in life, whether they have an addiction or not. I think just, just any human, it would help. The fundamentals you learn. So for me, what I learned, growing up, starting in the fame lifestyle at 21, yeah. doing world tours, all that shit, uh, an assistant to make my bed, not having to do shit by myself, aside from wipe my ass. At 21. At 21, yeah. I didn't learn life like a normal 20 year old should. So I learned the basics of the basics, starting from literally making my own fucking bed in the morning. Yeah. Little shit. So as rehab went on, and I'm at, there's no phone, no social media. Sounds amazing. I went into rehab with 20 hour daily average screen time. My average screen time now is four hours or less. Damn. And if I'm on my phone, it's because I'm using the Nike Run Club app or a mindfulness app or Audible or something like that, not social media. So you learn the basic fundamentals of fucking life. One, you get to detach from the disgusting, toxic lifestyle we have grown to love and yearn and get our validation from, which is social media. For the first time in 10 years, I didn't have a phone in my pocket. I couldn't reach for it. I also gave up vapes as soon as I got there. So not only that. Um, and I, I, I just, all those, the little components of life I started picking up. So I began to ask myself the first week into rehab, I reflected on my life prior, right before I had gone into rehab. Yeah. I said, okay, wait, I used to go to sleep at 4 a.m. The last thing visually I would see is two porn stars having sex. I would jack off. There would be three meals of Postmates by my bedside. I would go to, I would hit a vape right before I sleep. I would wake up mid afternoon, two, 4 PM. The first thing I would do is hit a vape upon waking up. Oh, I wonder why I was so miserable because I convinced myself that I needed Adderall to have energy. That's why I would take it. That's why I take Adderall. I convinced myself that me as a human had no energy left in my system without Adderall. What did I learn in rehab? Oh, you're telling me if I go to sleep at a proper hour, wake up at a proper hour, eat healthy, I'll have more energy than I've ever had before? Yeah, basic shit. Basic shit yeah. that I didn't know and I didn't have time to fucking slam on the brakes in this fast lifestyle I was chasing. And, and here's the deal though too, man. Just so you know, it's fair. Like even people listening, not just because you were like a really super uh, like absurdly successful 21-year-old, People listening who even don't even have like any of that kind of shit, it's still relative. Like that stuff still happens to people where they, they miss out on the basic things and they, they, they're wondering like why they're at where they're at because they haven't like fully built those basic blocks. And like I can even say, you know, as a fucking 32 year old, how old are you now? 31. 31. There's still things that I'm learning to this day that like I need to become better at, that I need to get a better handle on in my life. And like, <clears throat> excuse me. It's, it's, I just want to say to the people listening, this is the thing that I find really important. We're, we're going to kind of talk about this in a little bit. I could tell it's going there is the timing in life, right? Mm -hmm. I, your timing for which you finally figure out, like, if this is truly your time, you're like, oh shit, like some shit's kind of starting to click. Mm -hmm. Where like, I know the direction I need to start to go in and won't have these drastic up and downs. Mm -hmm. You have to understand and people listening and you too, man, it's like, it's completely normal and fine to not have that figured out. At, at this exact point in time. But as long as you're trying to figure out is the fucking key. Yeah, and always trying. Because, yeah, because it seemed like when you were younger, it's like you were so fixated on just having the success, losing it, and then trying to get it back, and then losing it and trying to get it back, that you were never lo looking at just those basic things in your life that, had, that allowed you to create structure. Okay, that's a great point, because not only structure, what it didn't allow me to do was 
and I learned this in rehab was I would always try to get validation and fill the holes. We all have holes inside us. I would try to fill the holes through stuff like money, sex, cars, clothes, validation, outside shit. Yeah. Not realizing like, wait, I, my mom asked me to go on walks all the time and I say no. My sister calls me to ask how I'm doing. My nieces love swimming with me. My niece and nephews love swimming with me. That shit is what could fill my holes, but what I'm closing my eyes to and not accepting. Everything I'm looking for in life, I already have. Yeah. Just like all our talents, we already possess. We just have to know we have them and believe in it. Yeah. Everything I needed in life, I already had. All that extra shit, getting an extra 10,000 likes on Instagram because I think it'll make me happier, an extra $10,000 this month because I think it'll make me happier, that shit's never going to make me happy and it's always going to be a, a never-ending chase. Because yeah. the second I get it, you want more. I want more. Yeah. But my family, all right, I want more love. They'll give me it. So, so when did you start to see this, though? Rehab. Like presence. Rehab. But like what things in rehab taught you that? That like finally allowed you to see it instead of just be like, because I, I was telling you this kind of shit for years. Exactly what my brother said. But you don't. Didn't click. Why did it, it never, click in rehab? Oh, man. I, I don't. And I love the concept because I, I, trust me, man, there's moments where I'm like, fuck, this social media shit's too much. I need to fucking yeah. take a break. It, it, it really. Okay. So, so much happened in rehab. Like each, like the 30 days I spent in rehab felt like 16 years. What? Like life felt longer because days were not like days outside of rehab fly by. A year flies by and you're like, oh, my God, it's New Year's already. Nothing happened. Yeah, because you didn't do anything this year. A lot of shit happens in a fucking year, you know, or you focus on the wrong thing. Yeah. And your time flies fast. But yeah. in rehab, no phone, no TV, no social media, no nothing. All you had was time with yourself. So you had to experience real life. So grand awakenings happened there. I was reading books. Things were happening. So each day I would like there would be a bigger learning point, whether it be what I learned in that seminar that day. There was classes every day. You're busy the whole entire day. Yeah. Seminars, group meetings, therapists, psychiatrists, this, that or the other. And I would learn different things every day. For example, because I learned so many different things. What did I learn about food? I went into rehab at 220 pounds. Yeah. 220 fucking pounds. What do you weigh right now? 174. You lost a lot of weight. A lot of weight. Yeah. And let me tell you how my association and relationship with food changed for the first time in my entire life. So the food at rehab started getting disgusting. So one day I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a water fast today. I've read about them online. I'm going to try a water fast. So I did a water fast that day. You only drink water. That's it. Yeah. And black coffee. Black. Like no cream, no, yeah, sugar, no sugar, no nothing. Second day comes and I'm like, you know what? I don't think I'm going to eat today. I'm just going to try water. Two days, 48 hours, nothing but water. Third day, I wake up. You know what? 72 hours sounds better than 48 hours. I'm going to do it again. That day we decided to have, they decided to give us Nashville chicken sandwiches. Oh shit. It was my real test. I would have ate those bitches. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. So yeah. I, I walk to the cafeteria with my guys. We're sitting there and I, and I sit there and I make each one of them take a bite and tell me how it was out of 10. And then I walked out and I left. Later on that night. What was it out of 10? Like a seven. Oh, it's not worth it. Food was always seven at rehab. They always gave it a seven. It wasn't a 10. Yeah. If they said 10, I would have caved in. They yeah. said seven. I said, it's not worth it. Okay. So I go home that day where I'm just chilling in the lounge. One of the guys went to the gift shop on that Friday before it closes till Monday and bought every single bag of chips they have. My biggest, That's biggest my kryptonite is chips. Yeah. Family size bags. Yeah, I'll eat the, the whole problem, thing. Exactly. Every time. The problem with me, just like alcohol, if I take a sip, I'm going to get blacked out. If I take one chip, I'm eating the whole bag. Yeah, that's a fact in my life. So I couldn't even have one, right? So that's where it really happened. I go into the other room. I start hyperventilating for a bag of chips. <laughs> well, you also were, it sounded like you, you didn't have food for a few yeah, days. Yeah, but this chips made me have an emotional breakdown. One yeah. of the guys had to come in and talk to me out of it. You said, relax, you got this, you know, we, we, you, you're doing so good, you're strong, you got this, right? Oh, did he know it was about chips? Yeah. Okay, because I was like, oh, he thought it was like about some other <laughs> shit. No, no. Imagine he's like, you're, you're, he's like, he's trying to console you because he thinks <laughs> you're worried about like leaving rehab or something. You're like, no, nah, it's the no, chips, No, he knew it was chips. Cause it, here's the thing, though. 
that bag of chips you could replace with anything in life as an addict. I see what you're could saying. Could have been a bottle of alcohol that I was craving, needing. Remember that need I told you about? Yeah. I needed this chip, Bradley. Yeah. I needed this chip. Just it's, like I need a nut when I want to need a nut or yeah. I need alcohol. I needed it. This is the addiction. This is the addiction. Yeah. So I went to sleep instead, took a nap. I woke up. I missed the seminar. I got in trouble. Ended up going to sleep again that night. Woke up that next morning. That next morning when I woke up, that 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 need for the chip that desire that's that that burning everything was gone and i was fine and i wasn't even hungry i reached the stage of euphoria of the water fast yeah but what it taught me right there and then was if my gas tank and this is again the most basic fucking principle of life and i'm not talking about counting your macros now even though now i do count my macros as a guy who follows a keto lifestyle but what it taught me was if you're if the gas in your car is full and you're on a drive, you're not going to stop on the side of the road to fill up gas again until it goes down. So if I just ate a meal and I'm full, why would I stuff myself even more when I'm already full? That's how I get fat. So then I told myself the only time I'm going to supply myself with nutrients and food is when my body asks for it, not when I want it out of to console a feeling. Right. So I finally started what you're supposed to do in life. Oh, I'm a little lethargic and tired. My, 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 my sugar levels are probably down. Let me get this. Let me get that. Let me get this. And started putting the right things into my body. So that that day that I broke my fast on the fourth day, all I had, fruit. The next day, fruit and a salad. From that point on, my life changed and my eating changed. So in rehab, I was getting little wins like that, but those little wins compound into such fucking big wins where for the first time I had 30 days to just reevaluate and restructure my life and turn it into a normal functioning human being of society. So, okay, here's the deal then. Cause, cause like people like me, people like your brother have been telling you this kind of shit for years. Yes. Do you think it was the fact that you had no other distractions other than to focus on those things that yes. allowed you to actually change? Them? Oh yeah. Yeah. If okay. I like, had I been, had I not gone into rehab and just said, got knocked out by Bryce, I'm an alcoholic, time to change my life. I'm no. going to zoo culture tomorrow and I'm going to work out and I'm going to eat healthy. And I would have failed like I did a thousand other times. I've been trying to quit vaping for five years. Yeah. Why? The one time I go to rehab for 30 days, it's now been over 90. I haven't touched a single vape. It's so... I used to go through three vapes a fucking day, those many disposable ones. So fucked, yeah. You, you needed time You needed time to make it a real habit yeah. is what it sounds like. Yes. I love that you said that because everything in life that I'm realizing now goes down to habit. What are you consistent with? Yeah. People ask me, just like they always ask you now, how'd you do it so fast? How'd you do it? What do you eat? It all goes down to consistency. Yeah. It's doing something that, doing something of greatness on a consistent basis. Every day. Every fucking day. Or at least where it's like the majority of your day. So right now, I, I've been dying to go into this new boxing gym that I found that I want to start training at. Yeah. But I haven't been going. Consistently, I haven't been going. I haven't gone once. So consistently, I haven't gone. So that's, that's, that's what I do, not go. What do I need to do to start going? Go on a consistent basis to make it a habit. Yeah. Just like the gym now. God damn, I'm like my momentum, the pendulum swinging. So my momentum is going. I can't miss a day in the gym now. I can't miss a run. I'm training for a half marathon right now. I just finished training a 10K. Training Bryce eventually, right? You know, <laughs> you know, my ego told me that was the, what I was going to do when I was in rehab. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to post a YouTube because I thought my career was done once they aired that I got knocked out by Bryce. But it really, thank God I got myself mentally strong because, and I'll tell you how I learned to be mentally strong. I finally had the realization in rehab because in rehab, you have to believe in a higher power. A lot of people confuse that with God. It doesn't have to be God. It's whatever you believe is higher and bigger than yourself. Yeah. Something greater than yourself could be the way you love your mother. That could be your higher power. Right. Just something bigger than yourself. So, and if you believe in your higher power, then you believe that everything happens for a reason. Everything happens as it should. Everything that unfolds. So then it started getting me asking, wait, then anything good or bad that happened in my life, I shouldn't be mad at because it was supposed to happen. Absolutely. They would say exactly. And I had a trouble understanding it. So one day, my 28th day of rehab, I'm sitting, I'm sitting in the lounge and anxiety hit me. 
I was like, oh my God, when I get out of here a month after I get out, they're going to air Bryce knocking me out. A, B, and C is going to happen. This is going to happen. This person is going to say this. And I start creating the story. I go into the counselor's room and I start panicking. And then I go, wait. But if everything happens as it should, and good or bad, I'm supposed to learn from it, and it's part of the process of my higher power, then it's kind of like I'm stand. I could like the show could air, but I could be standing in a ring of fire. The fire being the commenters and everybody cussing you out and hating on me. The only difference is I don't feel the heat, and I'm okay with what's happening. She smiles at me and she goes, "Exactly." I go, "Oh shit!" So when that thing aired, it was like any other day. I was like, "Cool." My ego would have been destroyed. I would have been destroyed had I not got help. But Yusuf as a person was good. And that's the distinction between Fusi got destroyed that day. My persona, people gunned him down that day. Yeah. You woman beater, you abuser, you A, B, and C. Yusuf was smiling because I know I'm getting better every single day. And now I look at that punch, getting punched by Bryce. I want to thank Bryce. Yeah. For whatever reason he did it. For whatever reason he did it. Thank you. That changed my life. I'm just Truly. so surprised it is that it's finally at this point. But again, it's 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 there's no right time for this to actually be a reality. There's some dude 70 years old in rehab with me. At when you went, 70 years old. What was he in rehab for? Everybody a different thing. You don't know what he was in for. Did he ever tell you? I the, mean, I guess the, you, you're not supposed to really say. You're that, not supposed huh? to say it. Okay. I, he was. Everyone was in for a different thing. Okay. But literally a different thing. One guy wasn't even supposed to be there. He got conned by his family to come. I called him the Godfather, my favorite guy. I, I was, I told him, I was like, if you were my dad in real life, I would have loved you. He's this old Jewish man, hair slicked back, buttons open to here, had a cigar in his mouth every day. Maybe uh, that's why he was supposed to be there for the cigar. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no, no. Yeah. He was so dope, though. He was worth like a hundred million dollars too. The, how did they, why would they get him there? So, I, it's a long story. Yeah. yeah. So you think this is it? You think you figured it out? So the thing that I'm doing differently now than I always used to do, whenever I used to, well, I never used to try to get better. Like I said, I always used to try to get my ego better, my yeah. fame better, my money better. Now I'm actually working on me. Like um, anything I post on social media now is about my sobriety because that's the only thing I care about right now. It's the only thing important to me in life right now. But the difference that I'm doing and the biggest thing in life, I always used to look at like a lot of times in rehab, every guy would complain Oh my God, you're telling me I can never drink again? It's very difficult when you think about it that way. But it's much easier when you say, I choose not to drink today. Yeah. One well, day, day at day. a time. Yeah. And when, when, when you are a person like me and you asked me this earlier who lives in the far future and the far past, that's hard. But when I start grounding myself and living day by day, Man, my life exponentially but got so better. What the fuck finally made that click for you, bro? Bro, it was like what, time. what moment? What moment? 31 years of experience, yeah. all of it cumulatively. I yeah. don't know. All of it at one, like all of it. It wasn't so one girl. Oh my God. So I, I was hanging out with this girl post rehab, right? While I was spending time in Philly because I was going to move to Philly where my sister is. I love Philly. And I was hanging out with um, this friend that we know, right? And I, I'm obviously. I, I'm not shameful of saying I went to rehab. I got help and what my thing was. Yeah, there's no shame in that. I tell her all. the story and I tell her the Bryce story. Yeah. She gets terrified. She literally looks at me and goes, why would you tell me that? And I was like, because I wanted to tell you what got me to be this person. And then she goes, but you're saying that happened in September. I go, yeah. She goes, it's only been two months. Nobody can change that fast. I laughed. And I said... I didn't change in two months. I go, I've been learning but for you were 30. In, weren't you in for three months? Two what? Or three, uh, the rehab. No, rehab was one month. And then um, post rehab continues Got after it, that. Got it, my bad, okay. And, but I was like, I've been learning for 31 fucking years. Two months ago, I had another wake up call. But I've been learning these lessons and these, you know, these trials and tribulations for 31 years didn't happen overnight it didn't happen in two months it's not like the first bad incident of my life happened two months ago and now yeah. i'm like i'm changed i've been going through bad shit for so long yeah i've had enough to learn it's like it's like it, the real thing should be haven't you had enough yeah haven't you, haven't you learned <laughs> yeah. no i get it man i mean it's it's kind of like the conversation i was having with mike it's just it's from like an actual your actual perspective of uh, the other side of it where 
you have been, you've gone through so many things, but you, you kept failing to recognize your lessons and you kept failing to recognize them until you finally were like, Oh shit, enough is enough. The punch yeah. is symbolic. The, the, uh, you know, the rehab is just, is a, a, a way for you to start creating that 30 day, like actual creating a habit thing. And like you said, the most important thing I think that you learn from that that you've taken away from that is that, that idea of today I'm not having a drink, you know, mm -hmm. or today I'm not doing that thing that I know makes me a little bit shittier, mm -hmm. a little bit shittier. And then you do that and you make that choice. You make that choice and you're constantly now reminding yourself to make the good choice. And that's the beautiful thing, man. I think for everyone listening, that is the most important thing is when you go, the food that you know you shouldn't be eating, the alcohol you know you shouldn't be drinking, the tobacco you know you shouldn't be smoking, mm -hmm. the drug you shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. Every time you say, right now, I'm not going to do it, that's what matters. And then the next moment, I'm not going to do it. You, you know, you, you reach to go get it, you go, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. That's what makes it change. Yeah. And that's what makes it change for good. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, man, with or without that thing, like all of our lives are like that with everything we want to accomplish. Like we want to become the greatest at anything. And that's the interesting thing that I know about you is you became one of the greatest YouTubers at one point in your life, one of the most popular, most subscribed YouTubers. Mm -hmm. Cause you, you did that same thing. You were just unaware of it. That's the reality is like, this is a really important thing to make note. So you get this too. We are making these choices, whether they're conscious or they're subconscious. Meaning like whether you know I'm making that choice, not drinking, like I'm outwardly being like, I'm not doing that. Or like your subconscious just like, it's not, you're already just, you're already knowing you're not doing it, right? Mm. You growing all the stuff you've done and all the YouTube shit that you've done over the years, you made those choices consciously and subconsciously to get you to those points to fall off, to the points to fall off. Now you're just aware of your actual choices. That's what's so fucking important here. When you say, no, I'm not going to pick that up. Yeah. You know, I'm... I go to that party, but if I go to that party, then I might drink, so I'm not going to go. Yeah. Until you know to, to, to make the choice. When you go there, you know that you can go there and not make that choice, yeah. right? You're just now becoming more aware of your choices. And for everyone listening, like, I, I'm, I can't stress this enough. This is happening in your life, whether, like, again, it's conscious and you're saying, no, I'm not, or your subconscious is leading you in a different direction mm -hmm. and you just, you're not even near it. That's always been happening to you. You just finally recognized it. I love that. I love that because like I have a reminder every day. So like I said, I'm a runner now. You know, I always used to be big on the gym and that's it, lifting. Oh, yeah. Now I just run, right? I run my ass off, my ass off. I have like the Nike shoes, the fanny pack, the, the tra it's, everything. It's I'm so a funny because when you told me you ran, I was like, fuck, but like, how the fuck did you get past like the first week? Because <laughs> dog, every time I go to run, I'm like, this shit ain't yeah, for me, man. Exactly. And like, that's all I do hurt. now. But here's what, what's so funny about what you just said every single day during my run every single time it never fails i have the same thought thank god i didn't vape today every day i don't vape but thank god i didn't vape today because if i did this run would be a whole lot harder because yeah. when i used to vape i couldn't run yeah. a lot of people are gonna be like oh it doesn't affect you running it affected mine okay anything going into your lungs that much is gonna well, affect no. you're you. talking about vaping which anything you're vaping is yeah. affecting your yeah, lungs. yeah but are you, are you vaping vaping tobacco or marijuana nicotine N yeah that's and, and weed. I used to have PNP pen, everything. Yeah. But nicotine 24 7. And every time I go on a run, I thank myself for not vaping that day because of how much better I did on that run. Yeah. Every day. How many times I saw you take the vape, but you shouldn't smoke the vape mm -hmm. all the time? Always. It's non stop. Just, uh, it's funny how it's always, we, the, a lot of this shit, it's self inflicted. And we always wonder, like I said, this is what I was talking about on the Mike, the Mike podcast. Like we, we get to some place in five years and we go, how did I get here? I don't know how I got here. But you got here by making that choice every single yeah, day. You can only help, like, you know, you can only help somebody if they want to help themselves. So all the times you tried to help me with the right advice, the right words, I don't want to help myself. So I didn't get help. Yeah. Right now, I want to help myself. I don't want to. I didn't like being that 31 year old on a reality TV show, blacked out, touching a girl's forehead, getting knocked out by the most popular kid on the Internet. That's not who I am. That wasn't in alignment with who I am as a person when I look in the mirror. That's Fousey, the guy everyone sees online, but that wasn't Yusuf. Like, there's a distinction. I didn't want to be that guy anymore, and I finally wanted to change. So are you are you ever going to be, like, out on the internet again, just as yourself? Not like that, no. But, I mean, just as yourself. Um. Okay, so what I want to do now is, 
It's funny you ask that or say that because I was gonna say this earlier. Like no more bullshit, Fousey. Yeah, no, 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 no more fake pranks. No, none of that no, shit. No, 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 no. Yeah. Nothing for views. Nothing for. And I know people are gonna be like, he said that before. My actions are gonna show you. The only reason you're hearing it right now is because I'm on a podcast and you're supposed to talk. And I'd rather show you with my actions. So I know you're not gonna check on my career, but if I come back in a year's time, then it'll be my test of judgment. But whenever my whole career, first of all, I'll say this really quickly. I wanted to be an actor, right? And I wanted to be famous. Yeah. Why did I want to be an actor and want to be famous? Because I felt so guilty and shameful for who I was as the addict who snuck into massage parlors who couldn't last long in sex. Being an actor was a way to get the entire world to think and love me for something that I wasn't in order for me to love myself, although I lived a miserable existence. So my entire career, I wanted to be a motivational speaker. The intention of that is true. I do love helping people and loving helping people with my voice. But the problem was, had I, had I become a motivational speaker in the past, although I've given countless motivational speeches, is... You weren't I, really living it. Exactly. I could go on stage, preach to the choir. As soon as the curtains close, I'm living a miserable existence. Yeah. What I learned in rehab now is if I keep this up and I can be a year sober, I can walk the walk and talk the talk, and I can actually be a motivational speaker. And I have enough goddamn stories to help change people's lives that people can relate to. And that's what I want to do now. Yeah. I literally learned it in rehab. I called my mentor. I called my manager. I said, I don't want to do anything. I'm doing the boxing stuff now because I have a passion for boxing. Yeah. Me and Keemstar have a promotional company. We signed a deal with a company. We're going to host boxing events all next year but what do i want to do for my lifelong goal and i would i say this every single morning is my affirmation i know everybody has been given a gift and talent into this world my gift is the ability to speak and help people emotionally physically and spiritually and god please grant me the opportunity to help yeah that's all i want to do use yeah. my voice to help that's it and i think i can if i can stay sober one day at a time or now i'm at day 96 one day at a time and I get to a year, I'm going to try to use my voice. Well, you got to be the proof, right? You can't, exactly. you can't like you exactly. said, you can't be like, yeah, stay in school, kids, and be the one who's like never exactly, in school, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. So with less words, man, like I, I definitely, I want that for you, man. I want the best for you. And I've, it's actually crazy how long I've known you and how many like ups and downs. And I've, <laughs> I've been behind, I message you behind the scenes, like see how you're doing. It's, it's, it's cool to see you actually in this light and speaking like this, yeah. I've never actually had a conversation with you like this that was as genuine and as real, I'd say. I've been hearing that from a lot of people, everybody yeah. who's been seeing me and that's been so gratifying, not for the ego, but for the, for the self, just because I feel it, I feel different. When I wake yeah. up in the morning and I take muffin for a walk and I pack my gym bag and I go running and I shave in the morning and I go to sleep early and I eat the right food choices, I feel it. So everybody who's seen me recently, the first thing they've said, not like I could be wearing a really expensive outfit. They look right straight past that and go, you look good. Yeah. You look happy. Well, I'm you just look, proud of you, man. Yeah. Like you, it seems like you really are genuine and trying. And that's that's all any I of love, us Man, can do. you've been hit throwing gems out there. Trying. That's the word right there. Well, that's all it's about. That's all it's about. Because there's nothing else we could really do but yeah, that. Yeah. Right? Like every day trying. Yeah. And that's genuinely all that we're really, really capable of. Yeah. As much as we want it to be a certain way, we think, oh, it's got to be like there, so I got to have that, or I'm supposed to have this. It, none of that matters, man. None of that has ever mattered, though. Yeah. It's always just about trying. Like, when I saw my, my most success and when I felt my most success was when I was just doing things that, like, I just genuinely loved doing, mm -hmm. and, I, and I felt good doing them. And, and sometimes, like this podcast, like, it may not be the thing that gets the most views or the most engagement or the most likes, but I genuinely love like doing, doing it. it. I love it. Yeah, I, I've enjoyed sitting here. I don't even know how much time. I'm sure a lot of time has passed, but it's felt great. Yeah. And we didn't talk about this, and I will just say it as we're, uh, it feels like we're closing. I don't go on social media anymore, and that's been a huge. You did briefly, but yeah. That's been a huge, huge, huge reason as to why I'm becoming the way that I'm becoming. Hands down. You think social media has fucked up your perception? One hundred percent. Do you think it's affected a lot more, a lot, a lot of people that way? Yes. Yeah. I mean, it does, bro. It wears on me. I'm just not gonna the, lie to you. Just even open. I can't even opening stories could ruin my entire day without subconsciously, like you said, without even wanting it to. Yeah. Comparison. Comparison is the thief of happiness. You go through somebody's stories. Oh, fuck. They're on a yacht on a Tuesday with their shirt off with 10 hot girls around them. But I'm sitting right here at my d dead end job doing nothing with this big beer belly. My life sucks. 
a girl opens up another thing, a, a girl showing off her perfect the cellulite free ass because of her Instagram picture. Da, da, da. But my ass is full of cellulite. I don't have that. Oh my God, I'm not good enough. It's always comparison. That shit could drain the soul right out of you. The best way I said it in rehab, and I'm so glad I remembered because I want people to hear this, what my phone was to me. Remember Dementors in Harry Potter that sucked the soul out of you? (laughs) My phone staring at it literally sucks the soul out of me. But why do you allow it to do that? That's the bigger question. Because like you can use these things for good as well. Because we give it that power. Social media has given it that power. Like it has, but you give it you give it more of that power. You specifically. And we people listening, like we we it's our choice though to give it that power. It's not just me though. No, and for sure yeah, it's not just now I don't give it that power just as you don't. But the past version of me is sure as so many other people, they do give it that power. And that's why I, would, I told every therapist in rehab, I was like, if you think you have a lot of people coming in now with issues, wait till this next generation of kids who grow up on their cell phones start getting of age oh, to realize sure. they have problems. Without you guys are going to get. I mean, listen, I'm not saying I don't have any issue with social media in the comparison, right? We all do. But I, it's not just comparison. Like the length, this goes yeah, on and, and on. And it's like and just on, the on. amount of it what it takes from you every day the focus like there's a ton of shit that goes on bro when i used to get like if one picture gets seventy thousand likes and my next picture gets twenty thousand likes that shit did something to me actually yeah it's not good of course not yeah it's horrible you gotta learn to let it go but you're right about that i think dude i think in the next 10 years uh let anyways anyone listening if you want to get into a good job uh be a therapist because <laughs> yeah, in the, the next, next 10, 10 years, years you're gonna yeah. be fucking rolling yeah. though hell yeah social media is like it's a it's a blessing and a curse man it's a double drug. edged sword it's a drug it is a real drug it's a drug especially when you start getting followers get a little bit of likes and it just fucking yeah twist your reality and, I, and now i look at it with such different eyes for the first time in my 12 years on it i look at it differently and i just and i see how much it affects people it's just insane yeah one thing I learned in rehab also is because I knew I was like, although I'm having all these great changes and epiphanies, when I get back to L.A., my friends who it's their careers, their livelihoods, their jobs, you can't expect them to change and be different. And that's when I finally learned you can only clean your side of the street. You can never clean yeah, somebody always, else's side of the street. Always, man. Another basic principle I didn't know. Yeah. Because you always want to change everyone and everything. Finally realizing I could sweep my side. Whatever Brad chooses to do on his side, that's his side. Yeah. And that little thing it's such a basic principle it is it is hard to accept that too though yeah. it is hard Those not big, even just in friendships but just relationships and wanting someone the, to be oh, different hell yeah relationships. you know in relationship too you want them to give you the things that you feel like you know you want from them and they want things in a different way and yeah but that that's this is the most interesting thing about just human nature is like we can never always get it right or the way we want it right but like the way we're really supposed to have it like you're learning we'll eventually have it mm-hmm. truly man Anyways, dude, I'm proud of you. I love you. I appreciate you. I love you. I want to say one last thing. Go for it. I told you in the beginning I wanted to end it with something. Yeah, go for it. So you made a comment. In the, you didn't make it, but you made a comment that everybody makes in the beginning. You said um, people always say like, oh, how many times is he going to do this? You know? Yeah, for sure. So when I got better this time, as I when I do every single time, I got immediate tweets, immediate Instagram comments, immediate messages oh, you piece of shit. This is the hundredth time you've done this. Like, yeah. the time, how many times are you going to do this? Like, I don't believe you. My response to that is, <laughs> it's like the, my response to that is, I'm going to do it as many fucking times as I need to because no matter how many times I fail, the important part is to get back up. Would you rather I fail, sit down on the ground, cry, give up, you never hear from me again? No, that's giving in to defeat. My philosophy in life is try, grind, succeed, fail, get up. Try, grind, succeed, fail, get up. Because all these failures are going to get me to be a better version of myself. I'm evolving each time. Like in a relationship, if you get your heart broken at 18, by the time you're 24, a heartbreak feels a lot different. But if the first time you got your heart broken is at 24, good luck. Because you're going to experience what the person at 18 already experienced who has how many years of experience on top of you. So I'm going to get up every single fucking time. That's my answer. Yeah. I'm never going to lay down well, and give up. That's the way it's supposed to be. Exactly. Right? But that's pe- it. People don't get it. Of course. I mean, they're going to say whatever they want to say, but that's just the internet, man. And it, a lot of times, like that's, uh, it's not about you. That's about their own self-reflection, and they point it at you, and huge, you let it go. Huge, huge. You just have to let it go no matter what it is. Because, But we're all fighting a battle. We're all trying to become better, man. That's it. 
and it's, and dude, I'm I'm fucking proud of you. I think again, I, this is this is the one time I've I've spoken to you where I feel like there's a, a real genuine change. I hope sure. so, man. One day at a time. Yeah, we'll see. I'll give you a year. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, though. I love you, man. Love you for real. Thanks for coming on. Are we not going to do audience questions? Oh, yeah. We could throw some questions in there. Fuck it. Let's run I, it. I typed it on the screen for oh, a yeah, reason. I oh, I didn't see it. I was so into this conversation that... Okay. Kay. Yeah, give us some questions. They ask questions? Yeah, yeah. We, we get... Yeah. Okay, so... Nothing specific about you, right? Oh, okay, okay. They, yeah. These are just general questions that they have oh, okay, um, and okay. want to know. So where can they... Hold on. Where can they send us those questions so um, we can those answer Those questions them? you could send it to askrawtalk at gmail.com. Bam, baby. Let's go. Okay. All right. So the first question is, what's your advice for someone like me where I feel no emotion at all? I'm what? not depressed. Just feel no emotion. I tried to find something I enjoy and it doesn't work. Whoa. Um, it, so if you genuinely feel like you feel no, like zero emotion, you're depressed. That's what, to me, that's when I felt my most, when I felt depressed, I felt nothing. I wasn't like happy. I was, I was just, I was indifferent about everything. And everything that I did felt really like, doesn't matter. Fuck it. I don't really care. I'm just doing things. I'm just doing things. And I didn't have emotion around it. I was just doing things because they needed to be done. And that was it. And I wasn't happy. I wasn't sad. I think that is a true sign of depression. So I don't know this person specifically, and I'm sorry you're going through that. I would try and seek some help, like genuinely. Okay. I really would. I don't know. Do you have a different take on that? I Googled this before. One time I said, what happens if I don't laugh or have fun around friends? I was like, I feel nothing. Um, and that, like the thing that I get outside of your own head, you could be in your head too much. You're thinking too much about yourself. Think about others and other things and make it less about yourself and you start opening up more to the world around you, if that makes That's sense. That's interesting. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe the person is too... Like my know. dad is always depressed because he's always thinking about himself. And like what he has what, going on. What he has going on, what's being done for him. Like my mom told him when we were in the car, my niece was in the car. Oh, my, her, my mom's daughter, my sister, got us tickets to Legoland. My dad's response is, oh, fuck, I hit Legoland. I looked at my dad. I said, Baba, it's not for you. It's for Naya. Yeah. He didn't realize that. Yeah. So you think about others, you'll, you'll open up more. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Give us another question. All right. That's a really good point. So the other question is, let's see, where is it? I just lost it. Sorry. No worries. You're good. These raw go- <laughs> You're good. <laughs> I was saying raw talk. Raw gear. These are the shit. I yeah, swear the, to God. The chugs, the chugs, the chugs yeah. are sick. Yeah. Fine. Okay, so it says, what are your thoughts on alpha males and females versus beta males and females? How these different types of people help or hinder the world? Mm. That's interesting. I mean, it's a weird question. There's, there's shitty people and there's good people <laughs> and they help the world and they hurt the world. But like, it's, that is also the world, right? I think there's a problem with someone who... Uh, of a female or a male doesn't matter who's alpha uh in in the sense of alpha and only to make someone who is maybe in their eyes less alpha feel like less of a person or feel like identify their betaness right like so if someone's like oh i'm big tough guy i'm alpha a true alpha doesn't tell other people that they're not alpha a true a true alpha doesn't make other people feel like they're inferior so it depends on what type of alpha, right? Because there's so many, this is a whole spectrum of like how a person might be. But mm-hmm. someone who's truly alpha, whether it be male or female, they don't make other people feel lesser or little, right? They'll lift people up. So I think there can be shitty people in the world who are like, yeah, I'm the man. and then they, But them being and feeling like the man is only in making other people feel smaller, feel lesser, mm-hmm. feel, and, and that's not a true alpha. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I don't really know exactly where they wanted us to go with this question, but I just feel like, if you're really truly an alpha person, you help other people. There's no, there's no other way around that. Whether it's you help them through, you know, teaching them something or showing them the way. You're, you're, if you truly feel like that's who you are as a person, it, it's in service then to other people, not into making other people feel worse. So, that's I, my take on it. That was great. Yeah, give us another one. Okay, so this person says, "Hey yo, I have a question. I'm the most chillest hey, dude. Yo, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah." They're like, I'm the most chillest dude you'd ever meet. Like, zero anxiety. It's going to be a bug. Like, I literally don't give a fuck about anything. But my wife has a ton oh of anxiety my. and she struggles oh. every day. How can I help her get through her anxiety day to day? And what are the odds that, you know, you guys could help me out with this? Basically, is what All right, I'm going to jump into this one. Yeah, go for I it. think you should start with uh, joining her 
with meditation practices. So instead of being like, oh, babe, you should meditate, you know, and just giving her that suggestion, download the Calm app, put it on the screen, get a nice little pillow set up going on on the ground, be like, babe, come over here, sit down, try this with me, sit down and start meditating with her while listening to the Calm app. 15 minutes, fo have her focus on her breathing, show her that you're doing it with her, breathe in. Breathe out, help her release her anxiety. You can even do it more than once a day and show her that you're a part of that. And eventually, like I've seen it help me, it'll help, you know, change in your wife and do other, you can do other things with her, yoga, go for runs. Basically what I'm saying is join her on her quest to beat her anxiety for sure. and what she's trying to do. 100%. I will also recommend, I would say, not always when they're in it, like, when someone, like, for example, when I have really bad anxiety, if someone's there and they're, like, talking to me, I need that and I appreciate that. But how you help someone truly, like, develop themselves so that they can avoid being in those deeper situations is by, like, when it's not a problem, when she's not having anxiety, you know, when the person's not having anxiety, that's when you invite them to be like, hey, let's try this meditation thing. Like, if it's a problem and you're trying to fix it with the meditation thing, like like Yusef is mm -hmm. explaining, you can be helpful because, like, you're doing it with her. That's the, that's the very good calming part. But like, I think the practice in is, you know, when shit's all on fire, tr like then you're putting all the fire out versus like, let's just say there's no fire, but you still like, hey, let's practice this. Let's let's try or not this. even let's practice. Let's set up things to if a fire does happen to minimize and marginalize that fire. But that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying is, is yeah, the yeah. practice in doing it when it's not a fire. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, when everything's calm, you can go up to your girl and be like, hey, babe, let's let's try this meditation app out. And she's completely calm. You guys are both calm. She's not having her anxiety attack. And then she starts to feel more comfortable just in general with you, obviously. I mean, I'm sure she does, but she'll learn like these practices. That's the thing that like when I have really bad anxiety, I because I got good at the meditation and the breathing outside of the anxiety, I'm able to like snap my back myself back to reality. But I noticed when I only practiced the meditation when I was having the anxiety it didn't work as well because I was trying to like bring myself in, but I didn't, I didn't develop like the actual habit of how to do it properly. That's fire. So anyways, yeah, like have her have, you know, you guys should do it together when it's not an issue. And, and like you said, do it with her. That is, it's going to make her feel like, Oh, this person's really here for me. It's going to talk. Fire. And that's how you help someone with fucking anything, man. Don't go, go fix yourself. Like help, help them fix themselves. Especially if it's someone you love that you're married to and that you guys, you have a life together. You got to do your best in that. You got another one? Yeah, I can pull up another one. Yeah, give us one more. I love these fucking questions, by the way. And it's so <laughs> I noticed fun. it because you're like, give us another one. Give us another one. Yeah, one more. One more. This is his favorite going. part. The, the, the questions are dope, man. All right, so it says, just want to say I've been a fan for 10 plus years now. Crazy oh. to see how far you've come. They're going to know you for sure. I actually <laughs> met you in the gym this year and we talked about COVID. Um, oh, shit. Who would have thought I finally met Bradley Martin and we could talk about COVID? Ha ha. Anyways, here is my question. Similar to you, I grew up without a father majority of my life. I, I remember I this. never really had a role model that I looked up to. And because of that, I think I've always limited myself on what I thought I was capable of doing. I'm 25 and I truly feel like I have the ability to do great things. I just don't know what I'm called to be or do yet. What, what would be your advice to me and other people out there that may feel the same way? You got an, I got an answer. I got an answer. You want to you end it last since that person yeah. loves you? Yeah, yeah, go for okay. it. Okay. My answer is this. Um, I think um, people always ask me, what's the purpose of life? I think what the purpose of life is, I think everybody's been given a gift, been given a talent on how to make the world a better place, on how to help others. And in order to fail at life or to not live to your, for your full potential, that should be your greatest fear. So I feel like your purpose is to find that gift and use it for the world. So I think, one, don't rush it. Um, don't chase the monetary value of what's going to get you money. But chase what you love. Do what you love. And use it as a tool to help others. And thus, by doing so, you'll do what you love every single day, which will then bring in the money, which will then give back to the world and make the world a better place. Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. I'm going to... I'm going to, um, I'm going to expand on this a little bit. Yeah. So guys, listen, um, I had a conversation with a good friend of mine, uh, the other day and he said something really significant to me that made me be like, holy fuck, that is so damn true. And, and you guys, it, it's so important to understand this, right? Life is about figuring it out. 
every day, like you said, making that choice today, I'm not going to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. That is so relevant to this question. I had no idea exactly what I wanted to do. I had no idea that I was getting up today talking on podcasts and being able to make a living out of it. I had no idea that I was going to be wildly successful on the internet and Instagram and all this shit. All I was doing, and I've talked about this before, was trying to do more of the things that I love and more of the things that I enjoyed, okay? And I was, and, and then I found success in that, right? And I had a really cool conversation with someone that I really respect and appreciate, and he was like, do you remember when you were doing it every day before you had success? Like, before you had all the success you had now? And every day you were doing it, and it was fun, and you enjoyed it, and you were doing it, and then you got that success and you almost were like we're at the top in a sense. Like you're at the top of like your success. You start, you, you know, all the money comes in, all the, all the, all the shit that like we're trying to capture and get on social media. And he, got, he, he, he made me realize something that I thought is significant to this actual question is like you get to that point and you realize it's the whole fucking journey that is actually the best part trying to get up there, right? So whatever it is that you think you want to do or you don't really have an idea yet, do the things that you truly enjoy and try and figure out a way. Obviously, like, you know, you can't make money if you're like, oh man, I just like, you know, fucking, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, fitness. Mm -hmm. You can make money, obviously, but you, you, if your goal is to just make money, you might find yourself in a weird position. Like, the thing that I was most blessed with when I first started, no one was doing it. It wasn't like, yo, this is how you make money. Get on Instagram. Yeah. I was just doing the things that I thought were yeah. cool and that I enjoyed and I had fun doing. And then I was like, oh, this is an opportunity. Oh, this is an opportunity because of the things that I was enjoying and the things that I thought were, were fun mm -hmm. and cool. But my point is this. Part of this whole process is just trying. Like just trying new things. Trying new things, like I said, that you, you're enjoying. And then you can find yourself in a situation where you're like, oh shit, like that guy does the same thing that I'm enjoying and you know, maybe he makes money over here. He, he, he does a living doing this in like this like, you know, arm of that kind of thing, whatever it is that you're doing. But what you'll realize is this, like that journey is the most fun part. And what that, what that made me realize to answer to this question was like, just trying to figure this out is actually the most important thing. Like, and even where I'm at in my life right now, I have all this stuff and I have all these things, but bro, I still wake up every day and I just try to figure it out and I'm still trying to figure it out. And I don't have, this is exactly what I'm going to do. This is exactly how I'm going to do it. And this is what's going to make me happy. And this is what's going to make me money. I'm still just doing things that I'm like, oh, I really enjoy this. Let me do more of it. And there's going to be something you're doing in like three years from now that you would never have anticipated that you were going to be doing sitting right here right now. For sure. Like you just said, that was yeah. the most beautiful thing that you said. Like you don't know, you just have to grow through it but Go that's what it is like yeah. well, this whole conversation we're talking about is about i'm not i'm not gonna make this about the mic the mic podcast again but being present <laughs> in the moment being like yo this is what i enjoy this is what i have fun doing my heart's truly in this shit and you feel good about it because people around you are gonna see it and feel it as well and they're gonna be like holy fuck this person really gives a fuck about this and they're not just doing it because they're trying to get a paycheck or they're not just doing it because they think they'll look cool they're doing it because they actually give a fuck about it yeah. so start doing more of the things that you actually care about more of the things that actually make you happy and enjoy the fucking ride, whether or not you know exactly where you're going or not. It doesn't fucking matter because, listen, at the end of the day, we're not guaranteed 10 more years. We're not guaranteed five more years. We're not guaranteed 10 more days. Mm. But if we could say right now today, I'm doing the thing that I love or I'm enjoying the most, fucking that's life, man. And enjoy it and have fun. Yeah, that's it. That's all I got. I love you guys. Subscribe to the fucking channel. <laughs> uh, you know, all that good YouTube shit, the podcast, drop a fucking iTunes review. Um, yeah, and uh, keep dropping questions. Askrawtalk at gmail.com. I appreciate you guys. I'm out of here. Thank you for being and on. Cop these jackets, these raw gear jackets. Thank They're fire. <laughs> Thank you, bro. We out of here. I actually got complimented on the jacket today. Really? Oh, fuck it. Yeah. Where at? Crave. Oh, shit, where? Who, who, whatever who was. Some right No. The girl or a guy? Guy. Nice. Let's go, oh, baby. Oh, man. I'm sure girls will comment on it too, but it's fire. I know, it's nice. It's fire. literally fire. Oh, I'm, I choose this over my Montclair. Got the pocket right here. It's amazing. Over the Montclair? Yeah. Let's go. Fuck you, Montclair. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I feel bad, you know, because they make dope jackets. I don't know. 120. Like 125. Oh, how long it was. Yeah, so like one. I was lit. I was right. I'm proud of you. Super lit. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I gotta start running, man.